Well, good afternoon, viewers. Today we have this 2009 Malibu Hybrid back again for basically the same problem, the transmission going into limp mode. I'll put a link in the description to the previous videos I did on this. Uh, turned out to be poor pin grip on the ignition feed wire to the TCM. Um, it's actually working fine again now, and I'm just updating the software on my scan tool, but the check engine light is on and it had gone into limp mode. In other words, it was in third gear, I think. The transmission defaults to third gear. But uh, it, he drove it here and it ran fine on the way here. So it was a, about a month and a half, two months ago that I worked on this thing. It's from BC, this vehicle originally, and it made it to uh, Northern Ontario and died here. So we're gonna put the scanner on it and see what codes it has to uh, report and Hopefully we can replace that one electrical terminal in the transmission control computer connector. I did buy a donor connector. So I haven't scanned it yet. I'm just going to look at the vehicle record here and see what codes it was storing in the past. Let's look at the attachment here. Uh, the very first attachment. Uh, this one here. This thing had a multitude of electrical wiring modifications done to it and I put it all back to stock original. Wires were cut and spliced and it was a, a mess. I don't know why somebody did what they did but P0700 is a generic fault code in the ECM saying that the transmission computer requested the ECM illuminate the MIL. This is the code we had, a P0562 system voltage low and P2534 ignition one circuit low voltage. Those were the codes that were present due to that, uh, that power feed wire, the ignition one voltage wire going into the TCM being poor pin grip. And I initially missed that. So we're gonna scan it now. Unfortunately, being a GM, we can scan it with it running Key on engine running, unlike some Chrysler products and import products. I just updated my scanner software, so hopefully there's no glitches in it now. Let's do a network code scan. Pre-scan, post-scan, diagnostic health scan. Hmm, that's a new feature. Check available system for any potential issues. Well, let's do a pre-scan. I'll experiment with the enhanced features now that Snap-on's added with this 24 point, or 22.4 software. Catalyst efficiency low, P0700. Okay, so there's the P2534 ignition switch circuit voltage low. So I'm, I'm gonna change out that terminal on the transmission control module connector because I I just tweaked it with a pin to make a better pin grip and that's not the proper thing to do but I didn't have the terminal at the time. Now this catalyst efficiency code is uh, going to turn on the check engine light again so this thing probably going to need a catalytic converter. I know it's had multiple misfire problems and it's like we've been driven with coils. Coils were all modified. Again I'll put a link in the description to the previous videos on this vehicle. Let's see in the engine, in the transmission data, what the transmission voltage is right now. Let's just check for codes in the transmission, see if it's a current code or a history code. Uh, warning indicator requested, failed since history. So it, this P2534 is in history now. And let's go and look at data. I noted when, uh, the problem was present. The ignition one voltage PID in the TCM data list. Uh, where is it? I don't see it on this list. This one right here, ignition one voltage. Ignition voltage. It would be down around 0.5 volts 
So I'm going to open the hood and wiggle that connection and see if that'll drop out. Well, it didn't change other than going from 13.4 to 13.6, but uh, we're going to replace that terminal going into the computer. I have to get the pin number because I can't remember which one it is. So I'm looking for the transmission control module connector, and I'm looking at a connector view here in Identifix, which is uh, OE diagrams, and there are several RPO codes, ME7, MN5, LE5, MN5 LZ4. So I use this Comp9 website. Mind you, this information is in the trunk. And I punch in the VIN number. This is a subscription service. So there's the VIN number for the vehicle, and it does a RPO code list of all the options the vehicle was built with. So this is an ME7 transmission auto four speed GM BAS, which stands for battery alternator starter. This has the alternator that starts the vehicle, allow for stop start and mild acceleration enhancement so me7 is what we want the pin out for uh, that's this one right here so this is the connector view oh that's at the transmission that's not what i wanted that's at the transmission harness so let's go back and look for the transmission control module me7 that's the one so one of these pins had a poor pin grip and I believe that was the ignition one voltage which is pin 11 circuit 4 brown wire pin 11 either that or it was the battery voltage one. Well I'm going to print these diagrams and I can determine which one it is. I'm pretty sure the problem was on pin 31, which is circuit, circuit 39, which is called ignition 1 voltage. There's another pin 11 ignition 1 voltage as well. So we're going to double check all those pin grips and the ground 49. I'll show you what that looks like on the vehicle. So the pins in question looking into the face of the connector are pin 31, which is ignition 1, which is pink, and pin 32, which is battery power and pin 11 which is another ignition voltage looking at this connector like this 31 is one of these two terminals on the third row from the bottom um, it was mi this connector is missing the plastic uh, cover where is it here this cover is missing I managed to save that from a this donor connector and I took this connector apart so that I've got some terminals you can see that they're gold plated as well um, so now we got to figure out how to release these terminals from this connector so that I can go in and replace pin 31. So to depin these terminals, which are extremely tiny, there is a secondary lock right here that you slide out from the inside. And then you'll notice beside each terminal, there is a small little round hole. So use a very tiny needle like I have to insert in there and then you can pull the wire out from the back. It's hard to do this with one hand. So the wire will pull out through the back of that. It's right next to the red and white one. So I'm going to reuse, I'm going to use this new wire which is not compromised. Put it in place of the pink one and then slide the lock back in place. So I tried pushing a connector wire through from the back because this one came out from the back but it wouldn't go so I managed to pull the wire from the front and hopefully this will pull in until it locks. There it locked. 
and then slide this clip back over. The secondary lock. Like that. Now the pin pins in here are about 25 thousandths of an inch and this needle is 25 thousandths. So I can check the pin grip. And on this per previous terminal here, the pin grip is very weak. Now I, I tried to reshape this, tried to tweak this, but it's so tiny. We're going to splice this wire now with a solder sleeve and uh, put it back together. Try and put this plastic cover over top of this as well even though this one is probably broken, but it's still better than nothing. So there's the water wire uh, repaired. I made it extra long. I'll just loop it inside the harness here. Tape it up. Wrap it in loom. I use these uh, uninsulated butt fly sleeves and soldered and heat shrink and we'll try and put this uh, plastic cover on the connector so there's the plastic lock back in place connector plugged in I did check the pin drag on the other pins and that would 31 seemed to be the only one that was compromised I guess somebody was testing it at some point and compromised it with a needle bigger than 24 or 26 thousandths of an inch so Hopefully that fixes this thing. We're gonna reconnect the battery and clear the fault codes. So we're gonna clear all the codes. Key on engine off. It's fairly quick. Battery voltage is 11.3. It's not running obviously. 13 controllers. Let's go into the transmission control module. Data display. Trans data. And it was at the bottom of the right column. Eleven point five. Start it up and have a look at things. Well, I'll take it for a road test, but I suspect it should be fine. I hope it's going to be good. Hmm. We'll just read codes out of the transmission computer one more time. No codes present. But it does have an underlying problem with the catalytic converter I'm sure that that's going to be a problem sensor data, ignition data, fuel trim data let's try this one closed loop sensor 2 millivolts you can see it's switching sensor 1 millivolts now this one here should begin to flat line once the catalyst comes on stream. If they both look the same for a period of time, then the computer will determine that the catalyst is poisoned, which wouldn't surprise me considering all the ignition anomalies that were going on with this thing. I'm going to run it at fast idle and see how it, it acts.
So I suspect that catalyst is poisoned. You can see there's considerable activity on it, even though it should be up to temperature by now because this one's right on the exhaust manifold. And the HO2S2, which is after the catalytic converter, is switching very similar to HO2S1, meaning the catalyst is compromised, poisoned. Field trim numbers are looking good. Long-term and short-term field trim numbers are zero, basically. So we're going to tell the customer that he's likely going to have the MIL on in a couple days and he needs a catalytic converter. Uh, Tune-up parts have all been changed on this thing. Like I said, there was a whole bunch of hocus pocus going on with the coils. Who knows what kind of anomalies were created by that. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Well, that didn't work out as planned. Check engine light is back on. Transmission seems to be starting out in third gear and not shifting, so we're going to scan it and see what codes it's generating again. So let's go into the engine computer and see what codes it's got. DTC display. Hybrid battery temp sensor performance. These are new. The P0700 back again. So let's go into the transmission computer and see what we got in the transmission computer. Codes menu, display codes, DTC display. Ignition 1 switch circuit low voltage. Same code as before. Okay, well, let's look at the data. I was going to drive this into town and didn't get very far. Down at the bottom of this list here. Ignition 1 voltage, 1.4 volts, right there. Well, let's head back to the shop. So I'm back in the shop watching the ignition, ignition voltage on the transmission computer here and it's sitting at 1.5 volts. I'm going to go try and move the harness while, I, while it's running. Well, moving the harness going into the transmission computer and it's not changing. So I'm going to put a battery charger on this thing and uh, do this key on engine off. So I'm using a headlight to load test pin 31. So that's 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. And it doesn't light a headlight. 32 is battery power. You can see that lights a headlight. And pin 11 over here is key switch power as well, and that lights a headlight. But pin 31, the one I just repaired, doesn't light a headlight. Yet it did before. So maybe we had more than one problem. Let's figure out where that comes from. So circuit 39 comes from the run crank relay number 32 through a 10 amp trans fuse and here's this pink wire that I replaced at terminal 31 at the transmission computer it also feeds power to torque converter clutch solenoid 1 2 shift solenoid 2 3 shift solenoid 4 3 shift solenoid and that's why it goes into limp mode because we lose total power it defaults to third gear uh, this is an ME7 so there's no connectors in between, so the first we're going to do is find transfuse number four and see if it'll light a headlight on that fuse. Okay, so fuse number four is this one right here. I've got the headlight connected to pin three. Look at that. I'm touching the fuse. You can see the headlight. All I'm doing is touching the fuse. Unfrickin' believable. This car has been so messed up with 
electrical gremlins. It's not corroded. Wow, was it ever hot. Holy mackerel. So let's check pin grip. I burnt my finger on the fuse, believe it or not. Wow, was that hot. I'm going to get a terminal to check pin grip. So here is a terminal. That terminal is compromised. This one has got good grip. You can feel it pull. But this one's got nothing. Oh, brother. So how the frick do we fix that now? Wow. That fuse is actually super hot to the touch because of that bad connection there. Oh, my goodness sakes. Suppose we could buy, buy a new fuse panel, but the terminals inside there are compromised. Hmm. So I got the borescope out here looking at this, and you can see how the terminal is melted. Ay, 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 ay. Suppose I could take this fuse panel out and take it apart. Hmm. That's the terminal right there, you can see in the middle of the screen. Oh well. So I'm going to put a bend in the fuse like that and see if I can temporarily make a connection in there. You see the headlight is on. And it's not blinking, flickering. Well, we're going to clear the codes and go for a road test, but ultimately to fix this, it should be the fuse panel should be replaced. So now we got 12.9 volts key on engine off. I do have a battery charger on set it on 13 volts on it and I manipulated that fuse. I put that bend in that fuse which is just a jiffy on a toothache actually but it might last. I don't know what's going on with these hybrid battery temp sensor codes. They never had those before. Let's clear all the codes and see what comes back. I don't recall having those hybrid battery temp sensor codes before. Engine, codes menu, display codes, DTC display, no codes present. Well, let's take it for another road test. Well, the transmission is shifting fine now warning lights on yet. Let's see if it'll go into idle stop. They come to a stop here. Yeah. So I come to a stop. And the internal combustion engine shuts off take my foot off the brake and the alternator starts the engine and there's a mild assist from that 8 kilowatt battery pack and of course on D-cell it should show a charge like regenerative braking but regeneration is very very minimal on this because of all the drivetrain drag Regeneration. So I noticed while braking that the regeneration is much more significant, but you have to have your foot on the brake. 
you can't really feel any deceleration event like I can with my lightning but uh, definitely the system is working and then of course it goes into idle stop when you come to a stop so I see the check engine light has come back on but it hasn't inhibited the idle stop scenario as you can see it's I got my foot on my on the brake and it's in idle stop take my foot off the brake and it starts so I don't know if that's a catalyst efficiency code we're gonna check when we get home so that's after returning from about a 80 kilometer road test uh, about 80 percent of that in on at highway speeds average of 7.4 liters per hundred kilometers but now that I've reached home here I see that I've got it in drive put on the brake and it's not going into idle stop I don't have the AC on hmm so I noticed the check engine light is on let's see what codes it's set so let's see what kind of codes are in the engine control computer P0420 and a P0A9D hybrid battery temperature sensor circuit low voltage and hybrid battery temperature 3 circuit low voltage I wonder if that these two codes are in disabling the auto start auto stop but the 420 code is a catalyst code I don't know what set first and either regardless the transmission problem is resolved for now I'm going to clear these codes and see if it'll enable auto stop check engine light is off data display hybrid data I noticed the let's put it in drive and see if it'll go into auto stop hmm if it's reset a code already wouldn't have reset the 420 code that quick the interesting thing is it didn't have these battery temperature codes before I'm gonna look at some data well that one code sets when the hybrid battery cell temperature sensor voltage is less than 0.5 now I see one temp sensor here showing 90 Celsius which is unrealistic a second one showing 25 Celsius and a third one showing 25 Celsius I'm wondering if they don't give the temperature in, in as a voltage on the data list it doesn't give you any uh, reason for not allowing the auto stop engine auto start reason desired hybrid engine run time I haven't shut it off from the drive cycle so it's been running for an, almost an hour and a half hmm Anyways, that, uh, that fault code sets temperature sensor less than 0.5 volts for the P0A9D. And we didn't have those codes before, at least I don't think so. If I look in my history here. vehicle report from 9322 this is the first report yeah 
Yeah, see the P0573 brake switch. Circuit high voltage, P0700. And that's basically it. But there was so much electrical stuff going on with this vehicle, it's crazy. Well, I'm going to discuss this with the customer, but that's it for now. The transmission problem is resolved, or appears to be resolved. It should, should replace the fuse panel to guarantee that that doesn't happen again, or as much as guarantee as possible. But I'll li leave that up to the customer. Thanks for watching. Well, I was just doing a little bit of research and I found a recall that might apply to this vehicle on the hybrid battery. General Motors has decided to conduct a voluntary emission recall involving certain 8 to 10 model year Malibus and Saturns and Views. And the VIN breakpoint for the 09 Malibu is uh, 100,026 to 256,831 and this one's right in the middle of that. Now I tried to call the GM dealer to see if this recall was still outstanding and they closed for the day unfortunately and being Friday I won't be able to find out until Monday but I'm not going to do anything with this in case there's a uh, standing recall on it to replace the high voltage battery. Hmm. Uh, there are three temp sensors in the battery, one for each cell in the battery and one of those is uh, well it says if two two sensors fail and I guess the batteries have a tendency to leak they didn't really specify here uh, and if the batteries leak it would affect potentially the temp sensors so talking about cleaning up with baking soda and water new, uh, new uh, battery acid neutralizer but anyways just uh, another little tidbit of information might help somebody. So I can't leave this thing alone. I was playing with the Think tool and I noticed that if I went into the battery energy control module, I'm back on the Snap-on scanner now, I could see six temp sensors as a voltage and in degrees. And temp sensor one and three were less than 0.5 volts. Yeah, 2.6. 2.5 volts, 90 Celsius, 90 Celsius, that's not realistic. Uh, hybrid battery voltage. So this scanner doesn't give me the hybrid battery low current sensor voltage. Temp sensor, it just gives me the temp, oh here's the temp sensor voltage, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1.9. 1.9, 1.9, So these two, battery temp sensor one and three, have reached the criteria for setting a code. So again, I'm gonna find out if there's a standing, outstanding recall on this battery or not. My understanding is the batteries have a tendency to leak and of course, there are six temp sensors in there, two for each cell of the battery. Uh, and I guess they could get compromised if they got acid in them. So you can see these two are out of range and these two are showing defaulting at 90 degrees Celsius. So that's it for now. I promise.